Can I come to you with my problems? Can I come to you with my needs? Can I come to you with my troubles? Oh Lord, I need your help to believe. There was a TV show many, many moons ago. Its title was Sequest. It was about a captain of a submarine, the crew, and the submarine itself. Futuristic, set into the future, and it all showed different kinds of adventures and stuff that the crew did. One particular episode that I remember, and who knows whether or not it's available live streaming, but it would be a perfect example for today's environment. They come to a location where the uh, submarine docks and a few people of the crew get out and they start exploring. Well, this is a thoroughly modern city and great glorious buildings and stuff like that, but there is absolutely positively no person to be found anywhere on the streets. Nobody's outside. And they're walking around the city and all of a sudden they see this gigantic robot boom, 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 marching, and it's got these gigantic machine guns, and it's shooting up everything. Well, what's it shooting at? Another giant robot. Those two giant robots are shooting at each other, and it, I'm going, and the Sequest crew is scrambling, trying to figure out what's going on. Get to the end of the episode. They're trying to figure all this out. They end up in this one building. One of, part of the crew split from another part of the crew. They go into this one building, and no exaggeration, there's this kid sitting there, two controls in his hands, one for the, you know, button on top for the gun, you know, move the robot back and forth, and the screens, screens are in front of him. There are three or four different screens, computers everywhere, and, and they're going, and he's, and he's getting into it, he's like he's playing a video game. And the Sequest crew is realizing, wait a minute, that's what's happening out in the street. There's nobody out in the street. It's this just machine. And da -da 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 -da. and then they start exploring other rooms in the building. And they were just like this. Nobody's there anymore. And the other part of the Sequest crew that split apart comes back and they say, look, guys, we found a girl doing the exact same thing. And they're the only two people in this whole town. So what do the people in the Sequest crew do? They bring Adam and Eve together. You know what's fascinating? And the reason why I'm doing this video today, and I'll dive more into it in a little bit. The reason I'm doing this video is, hi, hi, screen. You know, us, here, hello, you know, here we are watching things on YouTube. Now, don't get me wrong, it's a great opportunity. And I'm not dissing the fact that I, I'm hoping that everybody leers and sees this video. But the bottom line here is this. What did it take to really get things going Two people coming together. And after they introduce the two people who are going to go warring against each other by means of virtual, virtual reality, uh, by the time they got together and the Sequest crew starts to go back to the ship, and say, a couple of them asked the captain, did we just see Adam and Eve start to work itself out? And the captain kind of smiles, and I just think we just did. Got back into the boat, psh, and away they went off to their next adventure. <sighs> these things are great. It's, it affords me to get these messages out to you. But the reality is, <laughs> they need you. I need you. You need you. To get from out behind the screens and out into the neighborhoods. 
I need you to get out from behind the screens and get into the house of God. We've got a great house. It's right over there. We've got a great house of God. Great place for people to gather together to worship and receive the word of God and to participate in that. That's another video and then another set. We've got perfect opportunities for us to gather together to study God's word. Now, here's the interesting thing. I don't do videos to replace personal contact. I do videos to enhance and maybe start personal contact. So here's my thought for today. We'll take a little bit of a pause here. This is obviously more than just an introduction. But we'll take a pause here for a moment for you to grab your Bibles. I want you to turn into your Bible to 2 Corinthians chapter 8. We're going to look at the very end of chapter 8, and we're going to look at the beginning of chapter 9. I've got to back up a little bit. From where did all of this come? Where did that first part of our video come? Well, it's about our commitment. It's about our time. And it's, and it's based upon a conversation that we had this morning, a group of gentlemen. And by the way, gentlemen, blatant plug right here. Tuesday mornings, 7 a.m. Come join us for some study and time together. Okay. End of plug, end of announcement. But it started out in the context of our conversation about two words that Paul was using to describe individuals who were going to be doing some work for on behalf of the church. Zeal and passion. And that just morphed into everything. It morphed into a dialogue of why do we do online videos? Uh, why do we do what we do? Why do we gather together? And here's a big conundrum that we are facing, it, especially in this time and this era. And that time and era is the distinction between coming together and being separated. Now, these videos, these, this transmission of God's word through the airwaves, so to speak, is a great thing to do. And so is personal time together. All right, so without any further ado, let's kind of dive into God's word here for a moment. We're going to start at verse number 16 in 2 Corinthians chapter 8, and we're going to roll into the beginning of chapter 9. We'll just keep right on rolling, okay? So bear with me, and I'll make a note here on the bottom as to the referent and where we're going to start, where we're going to end. But thanks be to God, who put into the heart of Titus the same earnest care I have for you. For he not only accepted our appeal, being but being himself very earnest, he is going to you of his own accord. With him we are sending the brother who is famous among all the churches for his preaching of the gospel. And not only that, but he has been appointed by the churches to travel with us as we carry out this act of grace that is being ministered by us for the glory of God himself and to show our goodwill. We take this course so that no one should blame us about this generous gift that is being administered by us, for we aim at what is honorable not only in the Lord's sight, but also in the sight of man. And with them we are sending our brother, whom we have often tested and found earnest in many matters, but who is now more earnest than ever because of his great confidence in you. As for Titus, he is my partner and fellow worker for your benefit. And as for our brothers, they are messengers of the churches, the glory of Christ. So give proof before the churches of your love and of our boasting about you to these men. Now, it is superfluous for me to write to you about the ministry for the saints, for I know your readiness, of which I boast about you in the people of Mac to the people of Macedonia, saying that Achaia has been ready since last year, and your zeal 
has stirred up most of them. But I am sending the brothers so that our boasting about you may not prove empty in this matter, so that you may be ready, as I said you would be. Otherwise, if some Macedonians come with me and find that you are not ready, we would be humiliated to say nothing of you for being so confident. So if I thought it necessary to urge the brothers to go on ahead of you to arrange in advance for the gift you have promised so that it may be ready as a willing gift, not as an exaction. The point is this. Whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows bountifully will reap bountifully. Each one must give as he has decided in his heart, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound in you, so that having all sufficiency in all things at all times, you may abound in every good work. And I'm not going to get through That's where we're going to stop. Fascinating, is it not? Zeal and passion. In the opening example of that episode in Sequest, we got this zeal and passion for two people going bam, 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 at each other by means of virtual reality and by means of these robots. But where is going to be the passion and the, and the, and the exuberance and the excitement when we finally come together? You see, the church was, is, and always will be about coming together, whether it's in worship, study, service. We're about coming together. A lot of things have gotten in the way of our coming together. COVID being one of them. And unfortunately, in some cases, this medium gets in the way. At the same time, this medium can be a great instigator, just like the letter that Paul wrote to the Corinthians can be a great instigator to get us to come together, to explore with passion and zeal and exuberance and enthusiasm the work and the service of God. Now, I'm going to wrap up with this, to which I want you to pay extreme attention. News alert, news alert, news alert. Why? Why do we do this? Why do I put myself in front of a computer screen with a camera with a little green light on the top of my computer screen that tells me the camera is on? Why am I doing this on your behalf? I have this passion for you to know the gospel message of Jesus Christ. That's it. That's it fundamentally for you to know the message of salvation in Jesus Christ. The passion, the zeal, the exuberance, the desire of God in Jesus Christ, God, God and man, 100% both sides. The exuberance of Jesus. I want you to know this. I want you to be exuberant about it. I want you to have this passion for Jesus and that it spill over into three areas. Worship, study, and service that your life, that's fundamentally what we're looking at, is your life in God. The zeal, this exuberance, this passion, this life radiate and not be limited to this little screen. You know, but get out there. Come together. Be a part of this wonderful joy in life that God has given to you, to be a part of that, to be strengthened by it, to be fed by it, to be nurtured by it, to participate in it. Oh, I'm zeal, I'm excited, I'm... Okay, I'm a little overkill here. But the bottom line is, I want us, fundamentally, to be all about God and to be brought back together, together, to proclaim, to live out, to do 
all of the above. So let's get out there. Let's do it. Let's serve. Let's study. Let's focus on the service and the grace and the mercy of God. Let's focus on worship, participation in, in that worship. And I want to wrap up with this. On our YouTube channel, I've been putting out weekly announcements. Check those out. This is what's happening here at Faith Lutheran Church and School. Check out those announcements. But better yet, come and be a part of those announcements, a part of that service. Um, you'll be seeing a lot more here, but reality is, let's check this out. Let's get it. Let's let's get out here. Let's move. Let's serve. Let's have our being in Christ Jesus and come together. But let's bring this message of salvation into the world. Let's come together and feed on God's word and build off of from and off of each other. Let's do that. Can we do that? Absolutely. Any comments? On the bottom, please put them out there. And uh, I would love to have a dialogue with you. I would love to have a dialogue with you. Telephone, email. Let's talk. Let's share with one another. All right? Let's do this. Let's, let's get her done. All right. See you next week. Bye. Can I come to you in my thoughts? Can I come to you in my needs? Can I come to you in my troubles? Oh, Lord, I need your help to believe. Oh, Lord, I need your help to believe. Oh, Lord, I need your help to believe.